This is the People's Market Update. I am your host, Bill Noble. Missed the rally? Missed the bottom? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And if you need help, I'm here to hook you up. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content works for you, please hit that like button. Anybody who's watching the short videos, welcome. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Speaking of comments, let's get right into it. Right into it. You know what Friday was? The abyss. Today is March 25th. Nobody bullish. Everybody bearish. People selling the Bitcoin ETF. Everyone thinking Bitcoin was going to go to 53. Honestly, I couldn't even look at it. I was like, me and the Eagle King were like, we're going to go bullish on Friday. YouTube threw that thing out. 450 views per hour, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. No one interested. And that told you all you needed to know, except the pain of this thing not being able to go up on Friday was like, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition of a bottom. Right? At a bottom, there are no buyers and it looks absolutely horrible. Horrible. And then you just wake up and Wall Street goes, darn. We didn't get what we needed, and now we have to market buy it all. This show is brought to you by my Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash unhinged crypto. We have a new report out in the paid store. Memberships $15, and we have 25 alts for the cycle with six groupings of five for active portfolio management and sector rotation. We'd love to have you as a member where we do podcasts and altcoins. And if you're, a, if you're not, you know, if you're not, if you're not doing commitment, you have these one-offs, long-term price predictions. Okay. And 25 altcoins released yesterday, two coins in that portfolio up already more than 20%. I got one. I got two words for everybody today. Three words. Hello, get involved, get involved. Okay, now let's go check and see who, which one of the Spartans are here. Driftless Crypto, what's up? Crypto Tilly, wrong again. No, you did not miss it. You are right on time. Right on time. Forget about it is here. Bull Runner, BitBoy Al, Cathargo, Philip, Mike Rocks, Ashton, Daniel J. Yeah, we bought on Friday. We had, we, we had, go check out on YouTube, the Eagle Kings thumbnail on YouTube, the bull with the big chain necklace. Market Update Nation, right on the money. Crypto Chronic, welcome. DC Precise, Duilo, Trisha, hello on Twitter. Welcoming our friends on Twitter. GN, Crypto Chronic, what's up? YouTube intern, Duilo coming to you from Madrid. Okay, news, blasting into it, blasting. Again, here's the Patreon store. Altcoins, long-term price predictions are the latest report. Patreon Spartans did very well with the roadmap. iOS marks these up. It's cheaper to buy them on desktop. Okay, I have a tweet on my Twitter about BlackRock entering the real world asset sector. So let's talk about this guy. Now, one of the things that fueled the bewildering bearishness last week was BlackRock came out and said, you know what? In addition to the Bitcoin ETF, we would like to put all of Wall Street on the blockchain. And what does that mean? Well, we'd like to have stocks that trade like tokens. We could have like <clears throat> Microsoft token. And we would also like to do things like put other securities like skyscrapers or commercial real estate. So once upon a time recently, somebody had to sell a skyscraper for a dollar. Commercial real estate's got their challenges. So what, what could we do instead of selling it for a dollar because we couldn't get anybody to pay a billion for it if we turned it into a billion tokens? and sold it to retail or institutions, or just had an active market where we could get an actual price and figure out what it's worth. Now, you think there are like, I don't know, low quality, not so good assets that we have a nickname for it in crypto, right? 
You know what it is? You think that crypto is the only place where they have like assets that could be an emoji? No. They got to get liquidity. Larry wants to be able to make legacy better and BlackRock better because they want people to come and be able to trade anything with BlackRock. Now, here's what people don't understand. Larry shows up on television. But if Larry is in, then everyone who trades with BlackRock, Goldman, JP Morgan, Citibank, and then the other mutual funds are going to have to do it. And everyone who trades with them is going to have to do it. And then the hedge funds are going to have to be on the blockchain. Now, what's on the blockchain mean? Well, if, to me, first thing it means is on ETH or Avalanche. There's the first two, right? ETH has got a DeFi mechanism already set up and Avalanche has a security token function. So as Larry, you know, keeping this succinct, right? As Larry and friends levitate Bitcoin, they're pulling the rest of the system up, the rest of the infrastructure up that all of Wall Street's going to need. What are they going to do? They're going to wait until 5,000 to buy ETH? No, no. Now, of course, one of the frustrating things about last week was it took the market like 72 hours to figure this out. Now it's, it's just like, you know, people are like, well, I missed it. No, you, no, you haven't, man. You know, if either is at 5,000 or 5,200, okay. Yeah. Maybe you missed the first leg, but this is like the beginning of gigantic people that have to like buy only, you know, the Bitcoin ETF. It's like, well, you know, BlackRock's got to buy and some other player that's, you know, their stock market product for Bitcoin is not as popular anymore. So one player's got to buy, another player's got to sell, and that makes great crypto Twitter stuff. But this stuff about the security tokens, oh my God. There's real world asset plays, which I've got on my Twitter, right? I put it here, okay? All right, I put the real world asset plays on my Twitter, right? So that I retweeted this guy. And then if you missed meme season, there's real world asset season. And then everyone's already forgotten about DeFi and AI. So everyone's thinking meme coins. Okay. That's cool. That's doge. We'll cover that. But Wall Street on the blockchain, DeFi in particular, like boomer DeFi and AI, another forgotten about sector. When you do sector rotations, what sectors do you do? The ones everybody forgot about. The ones everybody forgot about, the ones no one likes, the ones no one understands, or the ones that are hard to buy. Those are your big four in three, three crypto cycles. That's what I've seen. That is what I've seen. Well, would you look at this? This is X Media Studio. Hmm. Somebody getting ready to turn uh, a certain social media platform into a payment mechanism as well, like WeChat? This Dogecoin would be involved in that, don't you think? Coinbase revealed to be backing BlackRock's $5 trillion by 2030. Wait, you mean Coinbase has had security token infrastructure set up since Celsius in 2022? They got the big old vault. BlackRock's got its own little section, and they got a little section for everybody. Coinbase is ready. All he's got to do is push the button, and Coinbase is custodying security tokens. This, this is not some theoretical analyst thing that I made up. This is happening, right? And this has got to get priced in. Coinbase shares are not priced for this. The Bitcoin ETF is not priced for this. ETH most certainly isn't priced for this. DeFi, most altcoins, layer ones, oh yeah. And I forgot about layer twos. You want a reason to get that report? Yeah, I got AI and the hot, what I think could be that we think could be the hot layer twos. Because again, you know, if everything's got to go on the blockchain, remember when Matic went from three cents to $3? Yeah, that can happen again. And if you figure out what the hot layer ones are for finance, like maybe like injective, right? And then you look at the hot layer twos, stuff that maybe no one's even looked at yet. Holy cow, man, you're positioned. Everyone's like, oh, it's too late. No, man, we released that report yesterday, right as this thing started to arc up. This is the beginning, the beginning. Yeah, okay, maybe if Bitcoin gets crazy, around the solar eclipse, maybe there's some profit taking if this thing is up only five days in a row, but the overall altcoin picture, people, it's just getting started. Just getting started. Okay, US presidential candidate says crypto is the best hedge 
against inflation. Okay, well, let's talk about that. And let's also talk about top crypto stocks to buy before the Bitcoin halving. Okay, maybe you've heard things like real wages, real GDP. Like, what's that real mean? Hmm. Okay, let's talk about real wealth. You own crypto, crypto goes up. You can liquidate some of the crypto. You go to the grocery store and you're not as upset about higher prices. That's what they call a hedge against inflation, right? In other words, your real money, even though prices are higher, the amount of wealth and your psychology around money is better because you have something that is outpacing inflation. Whereas if some poor guy's walking around with an hourly wage and just fiat, you know, his real wealth is falling, it's falling, 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 falling. Now, top crypto, which is, of course, the reason to own crypto. And don't forget crypto as a form of money. Don't forget Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, XRP, QNT for payment plumbing. Like you can probably even start throwing in stuff like Nano, Solana as money. I, I mean, you know, has anyone thought about this? Right? How about the future of money ETF? Like the, it's not the future of money now. It's the present of money. Now, when you go to top crypto stocks, okay, Marathon Digital, Block, SQ, Riot, okay? No one has bought the crypto equities. No one believes this. You know, you look at Bitcoin, you wake up and go, oh my God, I can't believe I have to pay 70 for Bitcoin. People, Marathon Digital, Riot Blockchain, like, okay, yeah, MicroStrategy is up, but I, I did a YouTube short. If MicroStrategy winds up in the S&P 500, it could be at like $8,000 a share. Marathon Digital and all these Bitcoin miners, which we'll look at later, no one has touched them. Never mind Galaxy Digital, which to me is like the institutional spinal cord of crypto on the big boy side. Mike Novogratz made a crypto hedge fund when that was a joke in 2016. The high in the stock is 40. No one wanted it three months ago at eight and no one wants it now at 13. I'm like, holy cow, who, who is that? Who are you listening to out there? Uh, you're listening to me. And of course, I very much appreciate that as I appreciate the Spartans who do business in my Patreon, right? Link down below. But who's everyone else listening to here? Because it's stuff that should be just, you, you're going to wake up one day just like you woke up today. Like, oh, Friday, it's horrible. Oh, happy Monday. Whoa. <laughs> Wait do you see what happens in these stocks. Forget about it. Absolutely forget about it. Right? Okay. Joe Rogan talks about social disorder in the United States. Okay. A city, a city north of America might implement a tax charge when it rains. Key events this week, new home sales data, consumer confidence. Home sales are up because wealthy people got a reduction in interest rates because, and they own NVIDIA and Bitcoin, so they're fine. But what about, what about everybody else? What about everybody else? Right? Okay. Let's see. Social things. Oh, how about this? NVIDIA versus Bitcoin and gold. Gee, Bitcoin's up a lot. I guess I missed it. No, it's only up 800%. NVIDIA is up 1,300%. Oh, by the way, and gold has done nothing. Gold is not better than Bitcoin, but you could have gold at $5,000 an ounce. No problem. No problem. Huh, Goldman's hedge fund clients get more active in crypto options. See, if you can't trade crypto, legacy hedge funds can trade crypto options. Levered, fast money players getting involved. You know, I, I think we discussed that. I think we discussed that in a few episodes of Six Street Crypto and here. If hedge fund A is doing well in crypto options, Guess what? Hedge funds B, C, and D best keep up. Or at the end of a quarter or at the end of the year, B, C, and D will go away. I know that in crypto, we like to sort of look at legacy and these institutions and, 
you know, it's, it's easy to sort of like either be afraid of them or not like them. Listen to me. There are human beings. There's a human being sitting in a chair with his telephone or his algorithm going, we got to buy a billion dollars in Bitcoin a day. Or did you see what just happened in Bitcoin options? You know, are we keeping up? You know, risk managers are on the phone with their portfolio managers and trading desk and hedge funds, morning meeting going, oh my God, every weekend these guys ramp it. You know, they ramped it in our face because we missed it on Friday. What are we going to do? Now, the point, the reason I'm bringing this up, I'm not expecting you to shed a tear for these guys, but there are human beings experiencing real stress. And when they go to FOMO into this market, <clears throat> when, when the fear of missing out at the institutional level truly arise, you're going to know why NVIDIA went from 1 trillion in value to 2 trillion in value because in, in like a couple of months, because if you have a move like that and you're in an institution, you cannot miss it. Crypto market remains focused on ETF over fundamentals. Like Friday, it was like, oh my God, people are selling. They retrofit the news to the price action. Like, oh my God, people dumped the Bitcoin ETF, which they did. They wiped out the entire month of gains for the month of March, which was bullish. So everybody who bought late, sadly, even though we want them to come to crypto, they panicked and freaked out. It's happened to you. It's happened to me. And now it happened to them. Huh. They scrapped the limit on self-custody crypto wallets. Oh, what do you know? What do you know? Look at this. Coinbase, Coinbase shares rally 9%. Hey, everybody, they're the portal for BlackRock. When BlackRock does security tokens, anybody does security tokens. How about Galaxy Digital? Where, where's all that going to go? It's going to go to Coinbase. London Stock Exchange picks May 28th. What? You mean the, the Europeans want in? They want in overseas? London, Hong Kong, the major financial centers of the world. Like, what did you think? They were just all going to sit around and go, yeah, you know, we don't like crypto or we're going to go along with whatever everyone else is saying over here about crypto. Whatever. It's the free market. It's Wall Street. It's the global financial system. It's foreign exchange, right? Crypto is a part of the currency market. London is the hub for the currency market. It is, it, is the, it is the artery for foreign exchange trading because of the time zone. Yeah, a lot of the biggest stuff happens in the New York time frame, but still, London back in the day was the hub for currencies. You think they're just going to sit around and not do something? No, they're going to do something called an ETN, which is you know different than an ETF, but it's a, it's a trading product. Okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, Baby Well says, uh, you know, we're going to need a new name for the group, okay, because we've got more than 300 Spartans now, okay? Well, maybe that's true. Maybe we'll have the 300 Spartans and the Free Greeks. We'll come up with a new name. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Crypto hiring is back. What, you mean crypto as an industry is back when it makes an all-time high? Yeah. So at the all-time low, the industry vaporizes at the all-time high. Everybody comes back in. Oh my goodness, Solana gets a new NFT standard. Somewhere in here is somebody paid $16 million for a crypto punk. Um, somebody paid 16. Here it is. It's late 2020 all over again for Dogecoin. Actually, it's not. So somebody did buy it. Somebody, somebody did buy a crypto punk for $16 million. And that's because NFTs are back for gaming and as a store of wealth. And are you ready for this? As fine art. I don't know if a crypto punk is fine art, but it's probably more fine art and a collectible than say other things. Is it late 2020 for Doge? Here's the answer. No. Because what was Doge back in 2020? A silly meme coin. Now it's money. It's money. It's Elon money. And it's going to happen. In 2020, it was fueled by the fact that central banks globally had to print $14 trillion in one month to save the economy from whatever was happening. Or so they thought. Now it's not being fueled by liquidity, right? I mean, the, the Fed is not as tight as they were three months ago or six months ago. 
but it's not $14 trillion. So if Doge is going up, there's a reason. And it's different than 2020. Matter of fact, you could say that about the entire market. It's a rotation into money. So the speculative stuff on Solana goes first, which is always the case. In equities, it's things like Russell 2000, NASDAQ back before it was huge. The small caps go first, and then the big caps follow. In this case, you know, you had your Solana coins, still think when and Popcat going to do just fine. But listen, this is now, I, I, I don't like this word. I'm going to use it in this case. This is your, your bluer chip meme coin. Right? Things can still vaporize. It's not Coca-Cola, okay? But this is now unique. It's money, not just a meme. Oh, yes. El Salvador doubles down on Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, you thought this guy was going to get run out of town. Wrong. Wrong. Michael Saylor's like, I got to sell micro strategy to buy Bitcoin for my personal account before Bitcoin disappears. Because somebody's going to have to buy a Bitcoin miner or one of these companies. Wait until this takeover thing starts. Oh, my God. Look at this. Kathy Wood calls Bitcoin a financial superhighway. Well, I don't know about that, but it may be true. I mean, if you look at the way STX is performing and layer twos, who's to say? That is, is STX and layer twos priced in for crypto as a super highway? Let me give you the answer to that. No, no. So if you see something up 8%, who cares? I'm sorry, who cares? She reiterates $1.5 million dollar price target for Bitcoin. You know, she sold Coinbase to buy Bitcoin. That's debatable. I like this. Nobody wants to sell Bitcoin. No. When they sold the Bitcoin ETF, I got in the PowerPoint. The whales who thought, you know, the ETF was sell the fact at 49K. Yeah, they came in and took everybody's Bitcoin at 60. Right. They came in and took everybody's Bitcoin at 60. Okay, let's see who else is here. All right, let, let's get a pen out because it looks like we got requests. Baby Whale says SNX is still cheap. You're not going to believe the chart I got on that. It's unbelievable. GDL says the same thing. NXRA, somebody's got as a real-world asset play. David says for Sparta. Tybor is here. Spotter, welcome. Noah. Velodrome, I'll try to get it in. Okay, I'll try to get it in. Somebody says I have crypto. Re Somebody says Mercury in retrograde. Yes, okay. So we got Mercury in retrograde coming up. We got solar eclipse coming up. This is what I want to do. Solar eclipses can be wild. Let's try to make our money before the eclipse. And when the eclipse comes, it may be time to take some profits and do sector rotation. People, the reality is you're going to have to have a smaller number of positions. And you're going to have to be concentrated in, in cryptos that are just going to fly when the time comes, which is why we have the top 25 report. It's in the Patreon store. The link to the store is in the comments and the link to the Patreon for membership and the store is in the description. Yes, I'm selling it because it'll help you. In my opinion, Aiken, ICP. Yeah, here's a hint. ICP was in the report and was up 30% before the ink was dry on it. Spartan members got to see it first. Okay, Dave Canuck is here. Welcome. Trisha, up 560% on Coinbase. Yeah, the job is not done here on the market update until all the regulars and all the Spartans are leaving their day jobs. So help me, it's going to happen. Philip liking the shout out. Crypto Chronic fully deployed. Jersey in the house. Welcome. DC Precise is here. Okay. Market update, charts, PowerPoint, more charts than you could possibly imagine. Here we go. This is your market update, March 25th. This is not investment advice. This is brought to you by my Patreon, right? The QR code is here. And I know we have the super stylish QR code. Here's Coinbase. The BlackRock story 
If you missed it, let me give it to you straight. The BlackRock story is not priced in. Let me say that again. The BlackRock story is not priced in. It's not. Okay, so here's the Bitcoin ETF. Um, they had 1.6 billion of outflows. Everybody sold. And that means the self-custody whales bought the dip. So here's the Bitcoin ETF, IBIT, BlackRock's market goes up, corrects, two points. One, it wiped out everyone's profit since February 24th. And then, of course, look, went down, went up, went down again, looked absolutely terrible. Friday, the market looked awful. It was like it couldn't rally. It looked like it was going to blow through support. No bid. Awful. Awful. And then, of course, gap up only. Now, another note on technical analysis. There was a guy named Fibonacci. He was an Italian mathematician. Trading views got all kinds of tools. The most simple tool is called retracement. Market goes up, pulls back roughly one third or 38% using the Fibonacci speak. Now, when the market goes up, it retraces to one of these Fibonacci numbers, holds to the number, and then resumes. It's like chart book page 60. To me, that means you're in like a strong market or possibly even a mega trend, right? Because you have ebb and flow, and then it stops and it goes up. Bull markets, what do they do? They shake you out. Where do they shake you out? On support, either just below it or in this case, right on top of it. They just, it was clearly support, but it traded so badly, right? It was like down only, oh, it's going to go up. Oh, no, it's not. And then boom, it was gone. It was gone. Okay, Bitcoin, head and shoulders bottom. What's a head and shoulders bottom? Let's talk about it. Market goes down. Market pops up. Bears go, I'm sick of you. Crush it. But the bulls go, we're bringing it back. Then the bears get emotional over here on the right shoulder. They're like, you know what? I, I'm sick of you. I'm taking it down. This thing's making a new low. I'm over it. And then the bulls go and they meet them. They just meet them. They're like, you know what? No. And they start to bring it back. And then the bears go, oh no, we're all short in this zone here where we have the shoulder, the head and the shoulder. And as soon as it breaks the downtrend line, all the bears in that zone are trapped. They're all short. They don't own it, whatever it is. And then when the market breaks out, it travels this distance from the point of the breakout. In other words, everybody in this zone that's short has to cover and that drives the thing higher. That's exactly what's happening. It's like textbook. It's like, oh, I don't know anything about TA. Well, you know what, man? In this market, you really don't have to, right? Now you do have to know that when it trades horrible and on top of support, we're just below support and they shake you out and they wear you out and they wear you out. Now that's simple TA, but very advanced emotional stuff. So if you're like, oh, gee, I didn't understand the simple TA. Don't worry about that, right? Because because they shook you out. They messed with your head. They messed with my head. Friday, I was like, I can't look at this. Do a stream, do a bullish thumbnail. I'm staying bullish, but really, I, I kind of would like to cry because the price action is that horrible the definition of a bottom. What I did at that point was faded myself and my own fear and stayed bullish. Okay. You had a 13 bottom at the bottom of this market. Again, basic stuff working, not so basic stuff. The roadmap from Patreon. Okay. Bitcoin kind of staying strong following the roadmap. Ethereum, right? These, these matches are from the price history of the past bull market. You realize what Ethereum could do here? This looks like 2021 all over again. Why is why is an ETH above 4,000? Really? Like this shows ETH could just be up only. I mean, the BlackRock story is understood, but not understood. Like they're understanding the Bitcoin ETF story this morning, but I don't think they're getting the Wall Street on the blockchain thing yet. Yet. Okay, ETH on a four-hour chart. Again, the basics. ETH goes up. ETH retraces 62%. The 62% retracement in crypto is everything. If it holds, it's good. Sometimes they pop below it and come back. And if they do that, it's good. ETH hits the 62% retracement. 
Trade's terrible, makes you think it's awful, and then boom, gone. ETH Weekly, E-T-H-E. This is the equity market product for Ethereum, the cousin of GBTC. But let's keep the acronyms down. This is Ethereum in the stock market. Again, this is a diagonal. It's called Fib Speed Resistance Lines. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. It went up, it broke a line, it came back to the line, it held, and then guess what? You had a couple weeks of down only in ETH, and guess what? You can have a couple weeks of up only in ETH. Solana. Gee, I missed Solana at 170. Don't worry about it. It just broke out above 187. This is called hidden pivot. They're hidden because you don't see it. So when you break out above this level, you know, whatever Solana is right now, you got room between where it is now and 187 because the upside target is 264. So the risk is this much. The reward is this much. It's as simple as that. The risk is this much. The reward is this much. Polkadot. This is how you can tell people don't understand this BlackRock story yet. You cannot, you cannot not not have Wall Street on the blockchain without Polkadot, right? There's a group called Polymesh that rebranded itself. It was Polymath. Biggest thing that came out in 2017 on security tokens. Hasn't done anything for seven years. They rebranded themselves towards Polkadot. Interoperability was this big word. How is Polkadot not going to be involved in the future of finance on the blockchain? You got to be kidding me. This thing is trading at $10. Yeah, there was a lot of liquidity floating around back then, and they had a hype cycle going on this. But are you, are you telling me Polkadot should be at 10? I mean, everyone's like, well, I missed it at five. Okay, well, who cares? It's If it could go to 20 or 40, who cares? And I think Polkadot was underperforming this morning. I mean, look at this. When you zoom in on this roadmap, I mean, this is 2021 and this is today. And I'm going to panic and get out of polka dot when you know, there's some historical evidence or some historical parallels that suggest this could happen. I'm not doing it. Okay. Doge. Doge possibly entering a parabolic phase from its roadmap. Again, the Spartans had this in the store a month ago, a month. They had it down here, right? Go shopping. Doge, oh, I missed it. No, you didn't. There's support at 16 cents and the initial upside target is 25. And who thinks we're going to have a cycle in crypto without Doge at an all-time high? And when things do get to their all-time high, they just stop, right? Just like Bitcoin, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we're at the all-time high. Okay. Everyone pack up your stuff. We're going home. No. When it gets the all-time high, it keeps going. Okay. Optimism. Base chain. Get involved, figure out the base chain. Coinbase is stock. You may have a rocket move starting on April 5th, or maybe they're just going to do it now before the eclipse. I was like, yeah, maybe they'll wait till April 5th. And then it's like, yeah, maybe not. By the way, this blue line is the mirror of the previous crash. So it's the reverse. It's the down market from FTX reversed and flipped. Notice how Coinbase could simply go parabolic at some point over the summer. And who knows? They may not wait. Why would they? Especially in these, these crypto equities, man. People who have these like self-directed accounts. Again, it's not investment advice. People who are going to tell me that they missed it. Man, you haven't missed anything. You haven't missed it. This is not even, this is getting started. Like look at HUD 8. What have you missed? Like this thing was at 18 in July of last year. Like yes, all these companies have their individual fundamentals. They have debt. They have earnings. Okay, I get it. Not everything. It's not all pure Bitcoin plays. But seriously, folks, someone's going to get taken over. Someone's going to get bought out. And if that doesn't happen, someone is just going to figure out that there's no more Bitcoin. 220,000 views on YouTube, a short. There is no more Bitcoin. I produced it when I had 4,000 followers. There is no more Bitcoin. Really? I mean, yeah, there is, but how long is it going to take before someone's got to buy a company that produces it? That produces it. 
I okay, here's Galaxy, right? I, I'm just like, I don't, I, I'm over ranting on Galaxy, right? Galaxy is overdue. So if you look at this pattern match, Galaxy should have rallied already. And then Galaxy should be rallying again. <laughs> it's a $30 stock and no one wanted it on Friday at 13 something. Ravencoin. This was what I remember. This is the boomer tokenization of everything coin. That and Polymesh. <laughs> I think a lot of old ETH proof of work miners went to Raven. They wanted to tokenize everything. Now, I haven't rechecked the fundamentals, but somebody is going to have to tokenize the whole world and it's not going to be one Wall Street company. I know there's a lot of RWA projects out there. That's fine. Ondo. You know, Ando could wind up top five. Ando could be the chain link of this cycle, right? Chain link was something that, you know, chain link and compound, when that DeFi narrative came out, those two went to top five. They went straight to the top five, right? So if you have a real world asset or an AI narrative or a DeFi narrative, something's going top five. Could be Doge. I don't know. Do Doge is like eight. But something's going top five here. Now, I don't think it's Ravencoin, but Ando could do it. Now, synthetics. DeFi is dead, right? Let me plant this seed in your head. Nobody in the institutional world cares. Somebody said, Bill is money. Thank you. I appreciate that. No one, Megan is here still with Polkadot. Welcome. No one in the, no one in the institutional world cares about gas. They want to be on the best network. Right? Like you go to Las Vegas, what hotel do you want to stay in? You want to stay in a hotel that has no, no buffet, no pool. Is that going to be fun? Or do you want to stay in the best hotel? You want to be on the best network. When you go to a hotel, you want to be on the high speed network to work and watch TV. Or do you want to be on, you know, something where you can't even get your email. You want to be on the best network. Like in legacy, that's how they think about it. They don't think, oh my God, you know, I, I, I can't get the latest penguin coin. I, I'm not paying gas to get into a penguin coin. That's not how they think about it. Like we want to be on the best network. And there's all these protocols that have been here. They survived FTX. This is a three-day chart of a massive rounding bottom in SNX. No one wants it at $5, but I'm sure it'll be much more attractive to them at the rounding bottom target where you travel this distance from the point of the breakout to $7.60. I, no one wants it at five, but it'll be much more attractive at eight. Crazy. Like people think this stuff is dead. Please think again. Larry has told you, not Bill, Larry. Okay. So if you don't know what to do, just read the newspaper and do the opposite. Financial Times opinion, beware AI euphoria. Like all great bubble stories, the latest narrative conveys a sense of inevitability, whatever that means. Okay. If the media thinks it's a bubble, it's not a bubble. When the media thinks it's a new paradigm, then it's a bubble. Meanwhile, PAL, which was in this report, okay, could go to $2. Like the initial target's 84 cents. But if you don't have AI coins, you're going to get smoked here because everyone's thinking memes and you got to think Wall Street and AI. You got to say to yourself, what happens if crypto goes NVIDIA, both on the narrative and on the valuations? If you think that way and you think one of these coins is going to be top five, top 10, pal, as of Friday, was like 200 market cap, 230 something, please, right? These are like little AI marketplaces. There's a bunch of them. They're in the report. Get some. And that's the market update. Okay. We got 100 messages in the chat. Megan is going to look into Ondo. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's bananas. I mean, it feels like it's too late, but we, we should discuss Ando. We should discuss what they did to you to shake you out of Ando. Because they did shake you out. They shook you out. They shook you out. Nobody wanted to touch it. I'm telling you. You know, I, I talked to the people on Patreon about this. And it was a nightmare. See, this looks wonderful, right? It's like, oh. Wow, look at that, right? But if we go to an 89-minute chart of this, 
right? And we go back to when we were talking about it. Okay, so this is 89 minute. And I want you to watch the market just shake everyone out. Like this, this is a clinic. This is a clinic in what bull markets do. Okay, so first of all, you knew this was good because I call this the Pepe formation. This is what Pepe did before it blew up last year. Okay, it consolidates in a square. But look at what a nightmare this was, right? So the first thing I drew in Ando was this triangle, right? I'm like, oh, look how bullish this is. And what do they do? <laughs> they drop it this way and they leave it there. Like they not only dropped it, but they left it here. Okay. So they made it, it look terrible, right? Then it just sat there. Then they did it again, right? They ramped it this way. And you're like, oh, here comes the breakout. Here it comes. And then, boom. This is not a small move. This is 29 to 23 cents. But I'm sure it'll show up as a fib retracement. But they washed you out twice. They washed you out. Then they bored you. Then they washed you out. See, they even ran the stops. Like just, you know, brutal. They ran the stops below the 62% retracement. They got everybody out. And then what'd they do with it? Ramped it sideways, ramped it. And even in these cases, right? Like, look at this. They kept dropping it. This, this thing has a habit of getting dropped. So you're like, oh yeah, Ando. Yeah, it was obvious. No, actually it wasn't. It wasn't at all. It was hard. And if it's hard to stay in, then you should stay in. If it's hard to buy or if people hate it, like Litecoin, it's going to happen. Now, in bull markets, you're afraid you missed it. Don't worry about it because you don't get these things right away. You just don't, right? You just don't. But the thing is, when they try to shake you, shake you, shake you, shake you, then the next thing you know, after they have finally shaken you out, they shook you out a third time. Then it's gone. Now you feel like you can't buy it when that's probably not true either. Right? Because if you do the hidden pivot analysis on Ondo, so we're doing kind of a bull market clinic here. Yeah, man, this thing is just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to draw something different on this. Maybe I'm going to do the Fibonacci extension work. So let's switch gears from hidden pivot over here. So this is what you do when all coins start going parabolic. I think YouTubers just call it the 3618, right? So if Ando takes out 93 cents, Notice how it's stopping there. And I've seen this, like it'll get to these points. It'll have to sit there for a while, which is why I think everyone's going to rotate over to AI because people are chasing this. But the ultimate upside target on this could be $2.29, right? Or $1.39. I don't know if it's going to happen right this second, but if they take out 93 cents, you better be careful. It could happen. It could absolutely happen. Okay. Baby whale says Bitcoin cash, Zcash, Litecoin, and Doge. God, you know, this, this narrative on, I don't know, uh, on having control of your own money. Uh, I'm hesitant to even say about certain words. You know, the ability to control your, let's call it the ability to control your own destiny and any related coins. Okay. I'm sure Rudy will be watching the stream later. So let's do veracity for Rudy, even though he's not here. Okay. Again, there's your head and shoulders bottom, you know, maybe, or maybe it's just a downward sloping range. In either case, there are a lot of cryptos that are still down. They're still down or they were up and they corrected. Like, you know, ETH is at 3,600. Who cares? 
Fernando, Aiken, Pancakes and Peanut Butter is here. Mark, Fernando, right? Happy Monday from So and So. Welcome. Okay. Draco Velli on Twitter. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Okay. AGIX. Singularity Net. AI. Not doing a lot today. Not doing much. Bitcoin's doing better than this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, these guys, they they have the AI narrative. They they have the thought leader in the space. He was all over consensus at this time last year. Okay. This is the daily chart. Okay. Notice how these Fibonacci extension levels are working. You had this big overshoot. You overshot the resistance and the support as they shake you, shake you, shake you, right? So if this thing takes out $1.24, because you think you missed it, right? But it hasn't even broken out yet. If it takes out $1.24, you could be looking at $1.80. Okay. Okay. Or $3. You think they can't expand valuations of AI marketplaces and AI plays in crypto? But who exactly do you want controlling AI, by the way? Who exactly do you want controlling AI? Somebody said Kusama is still cheap. Speaking of like 2020. This is what you got to do with Kusama. <laughs> can you can you even draw it? Can you even draw it? Like you got to go to weekly. <laughs> I mean, the high in Kusama is five hundred, and it's been in this bigger the base, the higher in the space range in the forties. Now, you know what is the value proposition of this? I don't know. What happens it if it wakes up? That I can tell you. That I can tell you. <laughs> that's right. I mean, Trish is talking about a social media company that's going public. Yeah. And that's why you got to look at certain social media plays. Again, the report, the report, the report. Okay. Most of these AI coins today on my watch list, like pal was up huge, but a lot of them aren't really up more than ETH. They're not, they're not. They're just not. Okay, let's let's wrap this. Listen to me. You haven't missed anything. What breaking news? Right. Breaking news about a social media platform going public. You haven't missed anything. Okay. All you missed was the despair at the bottom, and the definition of a bottom is a place where no one buys. So you haven't missed anything. Because you know what? You didn't buy down there. No one bought down there. That's why it was a bottom. Second of all, do not underestimate what can happen in the world of sectors. If everyone's chasing memes, it goes AI and DeFi. People do not understand what this BlackRock thing really means. They just don't. Like the market like woke up because right? they're like, you know what? Maybe this bearish stuff is dumb. Maybe it doesn't make any sense. That's all, we, that's, all that's happened. So you're watching this Monday, March 25th. Nothing has happened. They just kind of unwound some of the negativity from last week, right? You got a solar eclipse coming up, right? If people, people start rotating, right? In other words, this is not, it is and it isn't 2020 and 2021. You can have massive moves in layer ones like that cycle. You can have massive moves in layer twos like that cycle, okay? but that has not happened yet. Yeah, okay, Solana went back to his all-time high, but BlackRock is not priced in at all. Like the Ondo example was it was like up, stop you out, up, stop you out, up, stop you out. Okay, they just did the first move. Okay, yeah, it's top 100. I'm not trying to get married to Ondo, but Ondo just exited from up, stop you out. Like the trend just started. So you 
don't want to get into a headspace where you're like, I missed it. You want to be like, okay, the trend has started. What do I do? What sectors can I get into? Do I have enough Bitcoin? Do I have too much Bitcoin? Maybe at the eclipse. Maybe if Bitcoin's at 80K, maybe you got to rotate. Or maybe you got to rotate now. Do I have the future of money? Right? If I have a ton of XRP, do I have any Litecoin? Are there any other plays in that space? Maybe I don't have enough of the XRPs, the Bitcoins, and the things like that. The portfolio report focuses on things outside the obvious plays like the XRP and the Solanas and the EATS. What can I get that's not obvious? Because everything that is literally happening is not priced in. See you in Patreon. That's the market update. We'll see you soon.